reject. Okay. So I'm missing my notes, and this is the first time I've ever done this talk, so this could be interesting. Um, so, first and foremost, I'm no, I'm no expert on health or fitness or anything like that. Uh, I'm thin, but that's not everything, and that's probably more luck than anything else. Um, but after many years being uh, working in development, it's just a topic that I've wanted to help people with. And to be honest with you, in Germany, probably far better than developers I've met in other countries. So not all of this will apply, but um, some of it, hopefully. So every day, as a developer, we're generally checking news, keeping up to date with news and updates that's happening in, um, in the areas we're working in. We're keeping an eye on issues and handling them and replying to them. We're taking care of pull requests and commenting and interacting with people on those. We may be helping out on things like Stack Overflow and other forums to help other developers who are learning and having problems. We may be attending and speaking at meetups and other events. And maybe we're writing uh, proposals and presenting at conferences as well. So this is a lot of, uh, takes up a lot of time. And all of this is also on top of a day job. And maybe, for some people, a family as well. This is quite a commitment, quite a lot of commitment here. And a lot of people outside the development community will say things like, don't you all get paid really well? Don't you all get amazing benefits and work in really cool offices and spend all day not really working? Well, this is... Uh, Sometimes true, <laughs> and not for everybody. This only tends to be uh, some companies, not all companies, and all developers. And still, health is important. You only get one try at it, within reason, <laughs> depending on beliefs and luck, <laughs> and a combination of the two, maybe. Um, and whilst life is worth living in the moment, sometimes the moment can be longer and more enjoyable if you're in good health whilst doing it. So, let's have a look at some issues. And I have some facts and figures in my notes that I can't currently see, so I may have to do a bit of really annoying switching backwards and forwards, because when giving facts and figures, you want to give the right facts and figures. <laughs> so, so this might be slightly annoying, but we'll see what happens. So, typical developer environment here, and another one, and another one. Apart from this last picture, where there's someone breaking my uh, rules, but they're the best pictures I could find, everyone's sitting down, as are most of you now as well. This isn't new, this uh, debate, and it was sort of up and down whether it really is or it really isn't. Um, but I think now most people are in fairly strong agreement that it is. <laughs> and we all do it way too much. Um, if you want to read a little bit more detail on this, it's a discussion that was mainly had a couple of years ago. There's this, oops, no, not that, that article on the Washington Post that has a really good graphic as well. But I've picked um, some facts here from the NHS. They seem to, as the British National Health Service, seem to be better than picking them from an article or some untrusted uh, blog. The NHS was, seemed vaguely more trustworthy. <laughs> so there's lots of problems with sitting down too much. And we are all doing it way too much. And uh, this isn't common or unique to development community, of course. All jobs now, well, most jobs now are sedentary and involve using computers and trying to do anything else apart from sit down all day is quite difficult. And of course, we're always ahead of most and on the cutting edge in the development community. So we've come up with ideas like standing desks. And actually, I want to point out in most, I've picked in some of these pictures intentionally because 
So this uh, person here has a standing desk, but there is a stool behind. And this is actually standing all day is also not very good for you. <laughs> so um, the secret is actually variety, really. A bit of sitting, a bit of standing, a bit of moving, maybe sitting in a few different places, giving your body a surprise and something, new experiences on a regular basis is actually possibly the best thing to do. And here's some other examples. So in this picture we have some normal desks and we have some standing desks towards the back. And these are becoming more and more common in all workplaces, which is really good. Uh, and here's another good example of a sort of similar mixed office. The strange thing is, though, it's more of a cultural thing in that um, I found... I go to events quite often and I like to stand up. I've been sat down all day and you stand up at the back. And people are really awkward about it. They always think you're uncomfortable or there's not enough chairs or... So it's a strange thing that we all know that it's bad for us and yet when you try to not do it, people are really uncomfortable about it. So it's a... The cultural shift has changed in that we know we shouldn't do it so much, but it's still seen as an odd thing to do, um, which is strange. And yeah, I still challenge whether you can get as much done standing up as sitting down. It's slightly harder, and you also notice, as we'll come to in a minute, it's hard to get posture right as well. <laughs> so it's a tough one, but we're, it's, it's something that more people are open to investigating. Okay, let's get a bit more extreme. Walking desks. <laughs> this is, uh, it's actually become popular as well, less so in Europe, and these are professionally available ones. I've never been to an office like this. This is quite incredible. And these are very expensive. Um, you can get some more DIY options, <laughs> like this. And there's plenty of uh, tutorials on this. And this is actually a friend of mine in Croatia. This is one he has, uh, and I know a guy in Friedrichsring, who's done something very similar. And as again, you can see, you can add, actually add a chair to it. And both the people I know who do this are incredibly thin and look like rakes. I don't know if that's good or bad, but... <laughs> but, so, but again, variety is kind of the, the spice of life, as we say. Uh, and there's many ways and things to try now. So, posture. We already had a quick look at that. This is a very traditional sort of look at bad posture. And coding especially is one of those activities you sit there, you're concentrating on something, and then four hours later you realize you've been sat like this, well, not quite like this because I'm standing up, but for about four hours with your back like that and your arms like that, and you suddenly think, oh, God, what have I done to myself? And it's very hard to not... To, it's very hard to avoid these habits sometimes. And we all know that we should sit straight, relax muscles, arm 90 degrees and things like that. But when you're concentrating, it's quite difficult to concentrate on anything else. Um, I have a more amusing picture there. But. And again, posture is uh, something that isn't new. There's plenty of advice out there on things to try. And especially in tech workspaces, I think, we tend to get better setups, but often there's also a conscious decision for you to try and sit better as well. And again, bad posture can harm things like uh, blood flow, back problems, of course, and as you get older, it gets worse. Um, I work on computers, I ride a bike, I used to play guitar. None of those are good for your posture at all, because you're always like that the whole time. So. Try. <laughs> it's hard work, but try. Okay, exercise. Now, I don't go to a gym. I personally think gyms are a, just a, an excuse for, to get money out of you. You can get exercise in other ways as well. But, and this is some advice that I want to, um, to, to give. Simple, simple things you can try. Yeah. This is probably the... Uh, when you try to find pictures about uh, exercise, you end up finding just lots of pictures of unrealistic looking people um, looking very happy with themselves. This is about the best I could, most realistic picture I could find about exercise. Um, again, I'm missing my facts and figures, unfortunately, but we all know that a lack of exercise 
mixed with sedentary lifestyles can cause weight gain, blood flow problems, heart problems, um, leg issues, back issues, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not proposing anything particularly difficult here. We have some very simple solutions of things just to get some exercise. Take a short walk every hour. Also gives you a good screen break. I think opinion on whether looking at screens all day long is bad for our eyes has changed somewhat, but certainly it's good to get up from your desk for reasons we've already seen. Walking meetings. I don't know about you, but I'm actually at my most inspired when I'm walking. And if I could, well, I can walk and work. We've already looked at that, but, <laughs> but uh, if I could walk more during my day, I think I would have a lot better ideas. The blood gets pumping and you get some amazing ideas. So we have stand-ups, what about walkouts? No, that sounds a bit too extreme, <laughs> but um, I think some other ideas. Stand up every hour, there we go, that's another one. We know the Apple Watch is a bit enthusiastic about telling us to do that, but you get the idea. Take the stairs. Again, this is actually far more regular in, in Germany than other countries I've lived in. Um, in fact, half the time there's not even a lift, so <laughs> you have no excuse. Uh, and walk or ride to work, if possible. In fact, even if you get public transport, you're generally getting more exercise than driving just by virtue of walking to stops, usually standing up, walking from a stop to your office and things like that. And of course, if you work from home, you have to try even harder with some of these things. Easy running. High impact running, if you're out of shape, is probably going to do you more harm than good. But even 10 minutes a day is better than nothing. Or a brisk walk, if you like. Swimming. Swimming is not only good for your fitness, it's also good for lung capacity. If you have problems like asthma and things like that, you don't have to, you, if you're a little bit overweight or you have bad feet, it's also good because you're not relying on them. So something like swimming is very good. Mental health. Now, this is probably one that actually gets overlooked more because it's harder to see. So it's sort of undecided whether... Whilst the brain is one of the, actually one of the biggest, and any of your friends who are fitness fans will try and tell you otherwise, the brain is actually the biggest consumer of energy in your body. It consumes 20% of the energy that you bring into your body, which considering how much space it takes up in your body is quite amazing. It's unproven as of now whether if you do more intellectual activity, you require more energy, it's sort of, some reports say yes and some say no. It's sort of one that is currently being looked at quite a lot. But those periods of constant focus, those periods of constantly thinking, put strain on you in other ways. Whether or not it's actually consuming more energy or not, as I say, is controversial, but you're still, the focus is tiring. Um, this is... Not the, it's not the best representation of what I was looking for, but this is talking about the isolation of technology. Um, for a lot of us in this room who were probably picked on at school and had a horrible time, and if you were a child of the 80s slash early 90s, there was no real escape from that world. Now there's an escape. You can find people who are like you anywhere in the world, and it's, it's been... Um, empowering for many, but it also cuts you off from the world around you. And this, especially if you work from home or work in distributed teams, is, is, a, is something to be conscious of. Um, I find myself getting less or more oblivious to what's going on around me and the feelings of people around me sometimes, and we're all doing it more. I don't know if you've noticed in the past 10 years, no one looks where they're going anymore because we're so used to being in our own world. And that can lead to side effects as well. So here's some ideas to try to help with that isolation of uh, working with lots of working with technology, but also that mental strain. And we'll come to some of the um, consequences of that mental strain in a minute. But here's some things to try to prevent getting it in the first place. Go for a walk. You can tell I like walks, but it's good for you. <laughs> Speak to someone you don't work with, um, whether that be in your company or outside of the company. Speak to the person you get your coffee from. Speak to someone random on the street. It'll probably surprise the hell out of them, but it'll make their day as well, hopefully, <laughs> depending where the conversation goes. Um, speak to a stranger, yeah. 
forced social actions. This is, this is one that's possibly harder for us. Sometimes it's easy to retreat into your own world. And we've already done that. I find myself doing that. I find myself avoiding conflicts because I don't really, why would I want to go into them? But sometimes the outcome can be far better than you expect. And actually what you were worried about resolves itself in a more positive way anyway. So try to force yourself into a difficult situation that you're trying to avoid on a reasonably regular basis. It's also good for your brain as well in uh, things like um, elasticity in your brain. Attend events. I don't really have to tell that to anyone here. You're all at an event. So, but to the people out there, attend an event. Volunteer, be it in a related field or an unrelated field. It's a great way of getting out of your mental space, realizing sometimes, depending where you're volunteering, that the problems you think you have are not as big as problems other people have as well. And that's a great invigorator for your mental health. Take a nap. Um, I don't know why the Northern Hemisphere or Northern countries are so obsessed with starting work at a particular time, taking a short break, finishing at a particular time, and then running away as soon as possible. A lot of other countries, especially the warmer countries, will take siestas, naps, whatever you want to call it. And there's been many examples... Oh, hello. <laughs> I have been ignoring that for quite a while. That's probably why. <laughs> Later. <laughs> I'm not going to do live demos are bad enough, let alone live update. Um, and it's been well proven that uh, many people believed in taking short naps. I, we know famous historical examples like Napoleon and Churchill. Uh, they're probably less realistic pe people to look at. But um, I used to work, especially people from countries like China and Japan, are amazing at just napping. And if you've ever been to any of those countries, you'll see people just having a nap. And I used to work with a guy in, back in Melbourne in Australia who would, after lunch, would just sit at his desk, take a nap. And it's actually great for your... I can't do it, personally, but it's great for your brain. It really invigorates you. Uh, and again, a lot of these bits of advice I'm, I'm trying to give are reliant on being in a workplace that will encourage and allow you to do these things and not think, oh my God, they're sleeping on the job. Who is this idiot? But, yeah. but try, try some of these things. Meditation. Again, I, I like kind of being uptight. <laughs> so I don't, I don't find meditation a very easy thing to do, but I keep trying. And I know it's good for me, but I'm not saying I do everything on these lists, as I said earlier. Um, this is alluding to, again, the impact on your eyes of working late, in the dark, just before you go to bed, is sort of contentious, but certainly we're aware that being switched on, wherever we consider that just mental activity or literally switched on with a device, you should try to have about an hour before you go to sleep switched off. Um, and again, something like a Kindle for reading, still is shown to not be as good as just reading a book. And I understand, completely appreciate. I travel a lot, I completely appreciate the convenience of things like digital books. Um, but give it a go, try it. Listen to some music or something like that. Sleep is by far one of the most important things to get right. Without good sleep, it affects pretty much all the other things we've talked about. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I can't see my notes of what's coming next. So, yeah. All these things, sleep helps. So, uh, even a little bit of... Strangely, it sounds like a, a contradiction, but doing some exercise before sleep can also help. And these, again, were from the NHS, plus many others. Here's a, an interesting one I've kind of gone off on a slight uh, tangent in terms of uh, mental health. Saying no, learning to say no, knowing your limits, knowing your boundaries. This often causes lots of the mental health in the first place, especially in our field. Um, this is a favourite phrase of a friend of mine. I'll leave it up to you to fill in the blanks. Um, 
having clear conversations and making sure we're not assuming anything about anything can be a good source of clearing up mental stress in the long run. If you don't have time for a task in planning, stand-ups, things like that, say so. I personally feel like it's better to under-promise and over-deliver than the other way around. If you don't understand something, ask. No harm in it. If you're uncomfortable, say so. And we, we at an event has a code of conduct, but this can also mean on a more micro level. We have a problem, say so. Don't let things sit and bubble under the surface. Now, we come to diet because often when we're stressed, when we have mental health, when we're feeling down, we overcompensate with bad, often eating, drinking, other things. I really wanted to come up here and say Club Mate is bad for you, but it actually isn't. I was quite disappointed. <laughs> the caffeine is about the same as a cup of coffee and the sugar is really low. So keep drinking Mate, it's okay. Just not too many. <laughs> so we'll leave that one alone. Pizza. How many events do we go to where the catering is pizza? And pizza actually, when done well, with certain ingredients and not too much cheese, not too much salt, isn't too bad but we can't guarantee that that's what we're getting. So, you know, moderation. I like a slice of pizza, but moderation. Or suggest to meetup organizers that they try something else. More of that later. Okay, I thought this would make you laugh. <laughs> it really exists. <laughs> Whilst mate is not too bad, other energy drinks are terrible. Coca-Cola, cola, actually pretty bad, full of sugar, full of all sorts of stuff, and a lot of the labelling on them is misleading as well. Um, often the ingredients, you don't even know what they are. So, again, in moderation, everything in moderation is okay, but try not to have too many. Mate's okay, though. <laughs> alcohol. I don't really have to say much about the negatives of alcohol. We all know where it can lead to when gone too far, but we also know that in our space, with meetups and certain offices, there's alcohol everywhere. And especially in Germany, it's cheap. It's freely available. Germans are actually pretty good with alcohol consumption in comparison to, I'm half English, half Australian exposition. I cannot talk about alcohol. <laughs> but it's always available in a lot of, and often for free, where we are and where we work. So, you know, be sensible. Now, I'm going to do a video next. Let's hope this works. No. <laughs> Let's see. No? Okay. All right. Um, this was, if anyone can recognize from this fuzzy image, the IT crowd, um, where Jen takes up smoking. And in most countries in the Western world, there are public smoking bans. And uh, smoking now feels like you're maligned. Oh. Anyway, so, so the likening is that now feeling like... Ah, no, okay. <laughs> Too much uh, beer. I give the ballet in Prague. Ah. I think it's going to be like this most of the time, so I'll just talk through it. Um, now uh, smoking in most Western countries is sort of felt like you're uh, an outcast. In Germany, not so much. But again, um, we also know that smoking is bad for us. We don't have to, you don't mean me to tell you that. Um, but moderation, again, if you're stressed, you might be smoking more. Try to solve the problems of stress instead of just smoking more, I guess. So here's some things to try. Uh, in instead of unhealthy snacks, fruit in moderation. This event has fruit. I see lots of other events have fruit. It's great. Nuts. Nuts can be, can be fatty and maybe have too much energy, so again, in moderation, especially certain sorts of nuts. And almonds. Almonds are terrible for the environment, so avoid those. <laughs> especially they come from California, which is a place we're all very familiar with, um, being uh, tech people, and they use a lot of water, and California is having one of the worst droughts ever. So avoid almonds if you can, for other reasons. Water. Water is actually quite a good appetite suppressant if you're hungry. So smoking, but see previous slide. Uh, healthy snacks. 
there's some solutions to this, and I'm going to um, forward you shortly to someone who's far better expert on this. Cook together. Often when you go out and eat takeaway restaurants are often over uh, salting, seasoning, putting extra fat, et cetera, et cetera, in food, just because, uh, really why. Um, so cooking together at work is not only a good activity, again, to introduce that men those mental health positives, but also you're controlling what's going in your food and you knowing what you're eating. Going for a walk. It's a good distraction if you're hungry. And I like walking. <laughs> so, um, thanks very much. Now, there's something else I can't think of. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, that was very corny, wasn't it? <laughs> so, I uh, have been a developer for quite a long time, but at the moment, I actually work in developer relations, which is sort of why I come into touch with a lot of um, developers. And as part of that, one thing um, I'm going to be doing in the future is collaborating with my, my wife, who in uh, Melbourne was an uh, award-winning cooking teacher. And she's still doing some of that here. But we're actually going to try running, between the two of us, as part of other things, healthy snacks and catering for events, tech events and tech meetups and things like that. So. We have some healthy snacks available. And I can see here at the back, are they in the, in the tent? Yeah, in the tent at the back. There's not enough for all of you. <laughs> and you only have 10 minutes, so go. Seriously, go now, quick. <laughs> Thank you. Reject.